So now we know how we got here and we know the tribes in the game, so let's explore the final part in this trilogy. Why the future of Scotland isn't bright is utterly fucking shite. One day I'll do a happy video. One day. Scotland's set for its long-awaited sequel to FREEDOM! But it's looking more like Independence Day Resurgence than rather than T2. That's a tightly packed package of irony right there. It's multi-layered. Be honest, kids. Does it feel to anyone like we're actually heading for a second independence referendum? Does it? Because it's pretty barren out there. Even the horse box the SNP gave Mike Russell has seen better days. Is this just another in a long, 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 long line of carrots being dangled in front of the saltfire masses with no real intention of actually getting Scotland out of this mess? With the real motivation being a little more than making sure those fat salaries, expenses and short money keeps rolling in. We can't have Pete Wishart without his wardrobe full of exotic slippers now, can we? So comfortable. This latest push for independence, far more elaborate than its predecessors, it has to be said, would still seem to be nothing more than another attempt by Sturgeon and the SNP to avoid the rising tide of criticism and unrest by pointing south and exclaiming with heartfelt sincerity, Did you know the Tories are terrible? Like, we know? If you don't know the Tories are basically just lizard people intent on sacrificing the poor, disabled and working classes to the great god Moloch, what fucking rock have you been living under? Large parts of the 2014 NDF campaign were fought in opposition to the horrendous Tory policies of Cameron and Osborne. Experts have claimed that those policies have killed in excess of 150,000 of the most vulnerable people in society. I mean, I'd call that murder, but would want to address up as Patrick Harvey for a bloody living? We know the Tories are bad. That is not news. And the way Sturgeon dodges all responsibility by simply pointing to Westminster. It's long worn thin. The buck stops with me. As she carries on doing whatever the fuck she likes, zero accountability while continually claiming that she is accountable. The phrase, the Tories are bastards, has been hammered home in Scotland so much that I'm surprised it isn't carved into the fucking rock of Ben fucking Nevis. So that all the Tories who venture out from Edinburgh to go Munro bagging can see it. I'm sorry, normal people might climb the odd hill, but you won't convince me Munro baggers are anything else but posh doggers. Am I wrong? The Scottish constitutional question has been such excellent cover for the SNP that I'm surprised it hasn't been added to Fortnite. It's that effective. We've already covered a list of the woes in part two that their own supporters seem to not give a flying fuck about, but let's add protecting loyal alleged sex pests to the list. And also failing to stand up for colleagues when they've had to call the fucking police because harassment against them from SNP members has been so bad. I mean, that really is a fucking low point, isn't it? Yet there was no off-the-cuff video from Sturgeon to crying abuse then, was there? There was no heartfelt tweet highlighting her unconditional support and compassion for her colleague. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Was there? Why? Because Nicola Sturgeon is a complete and utter hypocrite. She's a charlatan. And let's add in those brave and principled yes voters who so desperately want a better Scotland, yet won't say fucking boo about any of this. Again, it's like my cat refusing to see itself in the mirror, except that it's got the excuse of being a fucking cat. What's the excuse from these principled champions of democracy? Nothing. They don't have one. Just a bunch of cowards and hypocrites pretending to be better people than they are, because why? They wave a fucking salt tire? Some Scotland you're fighting for, eh? Nicola Sturgeon's like so genuine though. Genuine? Sturgeon? She might be able to not act like a robot when the cameras are rolling, but everything she does and has ever done is nothing but PR. Nearly every moment of her life is vetted by a coterie of PR bastards asking, yes, but will this be good for us? There is nothing genuine about her. Everything is calculated. Even that persona of being genuine is a deliberate creation used to contrast with the Tories at Westminster. Because it plays well with our base. It's politics! Sturgeon being genuine is the greatest lie in Scottish politics and why people buy into it. This is a mystery on the same level as how does Myrtle Fraser keep getting back into Hollywood? I don't even think Sturgeon is real, to be honest. I think she was abducted and replaced in 2014 just before she took the First Minister job. And her replacement was a robot replica created in a factory owned by Focus Group PR PLC. And you won't convince me otherwise. <laughs> I can't wait for this to get clipped and watch John Nicholson go off on one because he's that much of a dumb cunt that he'd take it at face value. These people are clearly insane. They think Nicholas Sturgeon's a robot for God's sake. I have proof. If ever a man was the living embodiment of a walking sphincter, it is John Nicholson. To the lascivious pleasing of a loot. 
Willie Rennie was an idiot, but at least he was kind of funny with it. The SNP now gets its direction from Sturgeon and Murrell alone, because they've stamped out all dissent, as previously discussed. So if the state of the UK is as bad as Sturgeon says it is, which it is, if the Tories are as fucking evil as she claims they are, which they are, then you'd think Sturgeon would be doing everything in her power to extricate Scotland from this dystopian nightmare, wouldn't she? I mean, that's only logical, and yet she's not doing that. She hasn't done that. Everything up until this point has been nothing but a pantomime that uses the constitutional question purely to reinforce the SNP's dominance over Scottish politics and solidify Sturgeon's own position. Hell, you can argue quite convincingly that the SNP themselves have acted as nothing more than a roadblock to an independent Scotland. Meanwhile, hoovering up all the votes while telling folk, only we are strong for Scotland. It takes some balls, doesn't it? I mean, this is God tier level con artistry. So then you have to ask yourself, why? Why aren't the SNP acting like an insurgent party, taking a leaf out of the art of war, making metaphorical Molotov cocktails and causing nothing but trouble for the UK government in a campaign to free Scotland from the clutches of the Cotswold Tories? I am to misbehave. Well, to answer that question, we have to think about Sturgeon and what she wants. She doesn't want to be First Minister forever. Her own record is shite because she's more obsessed with her own image than the metrics of her own governments. Liz Truss might have been wrong to say she'd ignore Nicola Sturgeon. Ignoring a Democratic leader is never a good look for anyone, especially not someone who wants to be fucking Prime Minister. But she was right to call her an attention seeker. Being First Minister isn't enough for Sturgeon. It's too parochial, it's too small. She's had a taste of the global stage and she wants more, so she's lining up her exit strategy. She always was. That means a cushy job with some global agency where she gets to give empty speeches about fuck all while being paid handsomely and thunderously applauded for it without the hassle and stress of politics. Oh my god, she's so brave! It means talk shows and festivals and all that shit. So it'll probably be the United Nations, the World Health Organization, or something of that magnitude where she gets to travel the globe and feel important rather than be constrained by the limitations of Scotland. A land going nowhere. But that land going nowhere is purely because she's eyeing up her life after politics. Isn't this a paradox? And to ensure she gets that comfortable job, Sturgeon has to appease her prospective new employers. It's the curse of the revolving door syndrome that haunts politics the world over. So Sturgeon can't act in any radical way to actually get Scotland free of the Union. That's why she abandons principles and policies whenever they come into conflict with responsible and reasonable capital powers of big business, big energy and the European Union. She has to be seen to be one of them. Controllable. Malleable. One of the team. Me too. And she can't do that by acting like the radical politician she pretends that she is. The entire demise of the democratic tendencies of the SNP, the false starts, the python-like grip that Sturgeon and Murrell have on the party, the refusal to move towards independence because the conflict of the status quo provides all the political power Sturgeon needs. All of it is nothing more than Sturgeon's way of making sure she's looked after when she fucks off. She's destroyed an entire political movement just so some suit in Brussels thinks that she's sensible. The entire country held hostage to one woman's vanity, a woman who then has the cheek to act like she's simply one of the people and above it all. The fucking audacity of all this is mind-boggling. It really is. And yet many yes voters and SNP voters still won't see anything wrong with it. So blinded are they by the fact they've taken yes and SNP and stamped it into their fucking DNA. And what's the response to all of this from everybody else? Or Scottish Labour can't offer fucking anything because, amongst their many failings, they still haven't gotten over their evisceration in 2015. And in many ways, they still don't even understand why that even happened. And so all they can offer is NO TO INDIAN F2! Even though they're aware enough to know that that isn't happening. Hey, but it gives them something to talk about because, eh, they got nothing else. The Scottish Tories, I mean, Douglas Ross is a laugh because he's a complete and utter fud, but they're the Scottish branch of the bastards that are turning the UK into a state where Mad Max would be a fucking improvement. So again, all they've got left to offer is NO TO INDIAN F2! That they know isn't happening. Hey, but it gives them something to talk about while they're not murdering disabled people. We have a compliant populace that, far from being the most politically engaged populace in the world, that line courtesy of a raft of Scottish exceptionalists, it's full of people who are quite happy to switch voting Labour for voting SNP and give it not much more thought than that. Keep your nose out of trouble and no trouble will come to you. Also probably worth noting the section of usual Tory voters who now vote SNP to assuage their guilt at being Tory bastards, but who vote SNP safe in the knowledge that Sturgeon isn't doing anything to properly disrupt 
the status quo. But the country is pretending that Indie Ref 2 is happening. It's like we're living in some weirdo fantasy land where everything you see isn't real. It's like that film They Live. Excuse me. So we've got a few more years of unicorn shaggers and yes voters decrying anyone who dares ask questions as TRAITORS AND UNPLANTS! We'll have SNP loyalists holding aloft anything vaguely positive about Scotland with the same reverence as Moses returning from Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments. Scotland, we simply love immigrants more than the English as we keep a load of Ukrainian refugees on a container ship off the coast because the SNP don't want to actually do anything to solve the fucking housing crisis. We have Ross Cohen and the SNP comms team spunking out its insufferable smug video after insufferable smug video about the fantasy middle-class Scotland they all pretend that we inhabit. Go and get your jacket. It's time. And then we've got a few years of unionists screaming the dumbest fucking arguments in the world that have been debunked to hell and back in response to a referendum that isn't happening. Why? Because they themselves have fuck all to offer Scotland except throwing a tantrum because they think their favourite urine-soaked Union Jack Blanky is going to be taken away from them. And we have Sturgeon's own Praetorian Guard attempting to gain control of whatever pretend campaign eventually does get launched so that they can stage manage the full thing and pretend that Sturgeon is fantastic and anybody who asks so much as a question about any of this deserves to be thrown in the fucking jail where they belong. A progressive and tolerant Scotland. And meanwhile, we have Scotland's radical artists and creatives who won't say a fucking word in case it impacts their funding or risks Sturgeon not retweeting their book. I mean, we all know who we're talking about, don't we? Might as well call them Casper for how utterly fucking transparent these people are. And the SNP will continue to tighten its control of Scottish culture via the likes of Creative Scotland, ensuring that only the most tepid and Scottish exceptionalist bullshit gets funded and produced by already wealthy middle-class bastards pretending that they're working class. Creative Scotland funneling public money into the hands of the Scottish establishment under the guise of art. It's just a gentrified fucking mafia at this point, isn't it? I mean, Tony Soprano would be fucking impressed by these cunts. Oh, the language on you. The Scottish media will continue to shit itself with almost clockwork regularity <laughs> while pretending that it's filled with serious and professional journalists instead of just a bunch of pathetic stenographers for Etonian wankers. I mean, what would Scotland do without the insight and intelligence of Neil Mackay or BBC Scotland's The Nine? Worth pointing out as well that while the mainstream media might be overly hostile to the SNP as a whole and independence as a concept, there sure is a tight-knit circle who are very chummy with Nicola Sturgeon. Why could that possibly be? Because she's not a threat to the status quo. Good, see, we're learning. We're learning here. And then there's the Scottish alternative media. That tide of radicals upset at the bias of the mainstream media in 2014. They were going to do things differently and hold power to account. Most of them now, nothing more than Sturgeon fan sites who are so shit scared of Sturgeon's Praetorian Guard that they need to apologise whenever they post something even vaguely interesting. Yep, we're looking at you, Mike Spall of Bella Caledonia. And finally, when it comes to the next UK general election and this plebiscite stuff turns out not to be feasible or even desirable for the SNP, they'll stick something in the side of a fucking bus just to get voted in office for another term. Stronger for Scotland. Again. Honest to God, who is the left in that party at Westminster with any sense of dignity or respect? Dr Philippa Whitford, a great person and decent politician by all accounts. Joanna Cherry, say what you will about her, but at least she utilised her skill set to try to stop Brexit. All while Sturgeon just got lots of photos beside her stop Brexit bus and then seemingly forgot about it after the votes came in. And that's it. Oh, Mary Black might stand up in Parliament and call the Tories fascists from time to time. It might do the rounds on Twitter. She does seem to be a favourite of the old Joe politics. But other than that, what happens? Fuck all. Fuck all. And of course, she still gets paid handsomely for doing it. I'll call the Tories fascists for free. Hell, put me in Parliament. I'll do it for half the price and a quarter of the expenses. I mean, that's a fucking bargain. And so Scotland is trapped. Stuck between the rock, a Tory bastards at Westminster, and the hard place of an SNP that talks big but benefits greatly from things staying exactly how they fucking are. And everything uttered is just fuel to keep the careerist snakes doused in money. Can we not do better than Alan Smith, John Nicholson, Stuart MacDonald, Stuart Hosey, Ian Blackford, Kirsty Blackman, and Pete Wishart? Really? And contrary to the unionist squeals of SNP out we Jimmy Crunky, SNP out we Jimmy Crunky, SNP out we Jimmy Crunky, no surrender we Jimmy Crunky. There are sadly no other options. 
The SNP has made sure of it, so everything stays exactly as it fucking is until Sturgeon fucks off and passes the reins to Angus Robertson, a very interesting character with absolutely nothing to hide. Not that that matters, I don't think there's any investigative journalists left in Scotland. But only when Robertson becomes king will the House of Cards start to come tumbling down. Maybe. But we've got probably like three or four years of the same shite before it happens, and the wreckage of it will probably be worse than the shite state of affairs we're in now. As if that was possible. In the meantime, you better spread your cheeks and get to Costco to buy lube in bulk. Welcome to Costco. I love you. Because we're going to get rammed repeatedly by the double-headed dildo of Holyrood and Westminster. Scotland. It's a nation whose mere existence contributes significantly to the mental health crisis. I promise I'll make a happier video at some point, like how many potatoes in Scotland actually do look like Patrick Harvey. But that's it. That's where we've been, who we are, and where we're not going. Now like and subscribe to at least give me some positives of this entire fucking clusterfuck.